video, I'm going to show you guys what is the difference between 60s and 70s clothes. As you may or may not know, I love to dress in 60s and 70s vintage clothes. And I've kind of like started noticing the differences between the two periods of time. First, the biggest difference that I've seen, well, it's not the biggest difference, it's just the first one. Um, these aren't like in order from biggest to smallest, but they're just stuff that I randomly came up with. Oh, and disclaimer, I am not an expert on fashion history. I don't really, I've never studied fashion history or anything like that, so I don't know the technical real differences between the two eras. I'm sure that like if you make a formal study or if you look for a book on it, they'll be able to elaborate on it much better than I am. These are more, um, this is more stuff that I've just um, noticed. It's like more anecdotal. It's not really <laughs> officially researched or anything. I just came up with these from the top of my head. And the first thing that I've noticed is the difference that there is in pants. And in the 60s, I don't know, I don't know, I bet they had some pants. I know in the 50s, like at home, women wore pants, but uh, when they went out, I don't know if they wore pants, but I have not seen so far any pants from the 60s. I would guess maybe there's like pants suits from the, from the 60s, but the pants that I've seen are like from the 70s. So like you can see a lot of bell bottom um, jeans from the 70s and I've seen a lot of those. But as for the 60s, it's almost all dresses, skirts, mini skirts. Um, yeah, mini skirts were really big in the 60s. Like Mary Quant, those kinds of mini skirts, they started using them a lot in the 60s. Then in the 70s, you kind of, there was, they really started wearing pants. So like jeans and bell bottom pants. So that kind of blended into the 80s with the disco and rock and roll kind of style. But yeah, that's one big difference. Like in the 70s women, it's really when they started wearing pants a lot. Whereas in the 60s, you still saw the popular fashion was dresses, skirts, you know, really more feminine, feminine kinds of clothing. The second thing that I've kind of noticed about those clothes is that 60s has a lot of like mod patterns. 60s is totally like the mod era. So they have lots of color blocking, lots of geometric patterns, circles. It's kind of, I think you call it mod op. I don't know what that stands for, but it's like mod op art or something. <laughs> but it's almost like one of those, um, uh, one of those like puzzles, like, um, no, not puzzles, it's like uh, when you stare at the page, it it's like this crazy pattern and you start seeing things in it. Like one of those, I don't know, I can't remember what that's called, but you have patterns that look a lot like that and on dresses, on clothes, and even, I think I've seen it on bags even. I don't think there's, they use it on shoes though, like, but that was a big thing back then. So you'll see a lot of re really loud color blocking, like lemon, lime green with red, or blue, purple, bright yellow, stuff like that. And you, I think like a while back, color blocking came back into style. I don't think it's so much in style right now exactly, but it's interesting. Like it comes back in style and people can't really figure out when that came from, but I, I think that that style kind of came from the 60s. And you see that a lot when you go vintage shopping like I do. I, I really like geometric patterns and stuff. So I like buying dresses that have those kinds of things. Um, whereas in the 70s, they started wearing much more flowier, much more free kind of things. And the patterns started really going into the psychedelic area so you would see tie-dye well tie-dye as far as i know i think in the 60s they also use tie-dye but in the 70s i think it's more it's more of a 70s thing compared to like the geometry and like the really sharp lines of the 60s clothes in the 70s they started really wearing looser silhouettes i think and that's you know maybe like also why they started wearing pants because with dresses you see you saw a lot of mini skirts that were like little squares and with the dresses as well whereas with 70s you start seeing like those the patterns that used to be very blocky turn suddenly into these really swirly soft patterns and stuff 
So yeah, those kinds of the lines change. So the third thing is kind of the atmosphere of the clothes. The 70s had a lot of like psychedelic patterns and like just more free kind of silhouettes and stuff. But the 60s were much kookier. Like the 70s was more about liberation and if you see like what was happening in those times kind of the trends that were coming up in clothes kind of reflected what was going on politically, you know, among society and stuff like that. Times were changing, whereas the 60s I feel was still kind of tied down to the 50s, like the golden good old days of the 50s, like the classic kind of looks. And yet I like, I'm kind of biased here because I'm more of a 60s person, but like the 60s started bridging the gap between the 70s and the 50s, so like you would get a lot of dresses that were reminiscent of the 50s dresses, but at the same time they had this almost whimsical atmosphere injected into them from the 70s. The, like they were, obviously the 70s weren't happening then, but like they were getting prepared to jump into the 70s and it just formed this strange kind of synergy of kookiness and sophistication. And I, I've noticed that in the 70s they kind of really started getting rid of the, the trends and stuff that used to happen in the 50s. And so like you can sign, you can kind of see that transition amongst the 60s still, whereas the 70s becomes its own kind of like really defined era. So yeah, like the 70s it just becomes something completely different. The fourth thing that I've noticed is that in the 60s they wore a lot of heavy polyester fabrics. Like I have some dresses that I bought that are from the 60s and they have that really this kind of heavy polyester thing like they're just heavy and a lot of the dresses <coughs> a lot of the dresses are like just thick they're 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 they don't bend easily they're almost winter like but they have they don't have long sleeves so they're not actually for the winter they're just kind of cloying <laughs> and yeah, they have this weird fabric that I don't know where they got it from. You don't see it around now. I think they only use it in like suits now. But with 70s, that kind of totally changed. All of the fabrics that I've seen so far in 70s clothes have been very, have been cotton, light polyester, stuff that's flowy and soft or softer than the 60s stuff. So like I saw one time when I was vintage shopping, I saw this, um, two-piece set that had the uh, sleeveless turtleneck t-shirt, well it's not a t-shirt, it was sleeveless tur turtleneck blouse with some bell-bottom pants and it was so soft, like it was crazy soft and it was thin, like I tried it on and you could see my underwear through the pants because they were so thin, you don't see that in 60s stuff, like they still had very heavy fabrics in the 60s. In the 70s, it's like they just stopped. They just completely changed the fabrics that they were using. So, um, and also like you got jeans in the 70s. So that was a totally new fabric that was introduced that just became completely widespread. Whereas 60s, they used, as I said, a lot of dresses, a lot of skirts, and you didn't use jean fabric. You didn't really use cotton fabric because they didn't really want it to show through. Like they would use slips underneath dresses, I think, and they would, I don't know. Actually, I don't know if they use slips under those dresses because they were just so thick, like how? <laughs> but anyways, like, I don't know why, for whatever reason, just they have this really thick fabric in 60s clothes, like the culture that changed in the 70s. Um, you can, yeah, you can definitely see that. They became much looser, much more open and free, like I guess, women's fashion became more uh, free, I guess, about women's body and stuff like that. But in the 60s, they were more tied down to the 50s idea of being like, covered up and wearing a dress and stuff like that. And in the 50s, they had like a stiff cotton material, I think. That's what I've seen. I don't know. Um, I don't have any clothes from the 50s. Oh, but like also the seams, I would say the seams, like, no, the sleeves, like I have a, I have a sleeveless dress from the 60s and it has like this weird thick piping right here, it's black, it's like this weird 
thick thing over here. It's like a caterpillar or something. <laughs> and I have yet to see that in like a 70s piece of clothing. Like, I've seen a lot of bell bottom pants. I've seen like these psychedelic shirts with crazy patterns on them from the 70s. And oh, what's cool is that, oh, so like number, this is leading into number five. So number five is that you can, in the 60s, you can see pieces of the 50s. In the 70s, you can see a lot of pieces that would become the 80s. So I feel like those two eras were like transitions between themselves, but in one, you could see a lot of the last, the past era. In the, in the second, you could see a lot of the era that was to come. So in the 60s, again, they wore a lot of dresses and they still wore that kind of, they had that kind of idea about fashion of, be, of wearing dresses being covered up, like stuff like that. You saw that a lot in the 60s and yet something completely new and manifested itself in that time. Like they started wearing more weird stuff and experimenting a lot with fashion. If you look at like England, that, what was it? I can't remember the name of like this neighborhood where they dress really crazy. But that's where people started experimenting a lot and yet they still wore a lot of the sophisticated pieces of the 50s. Which is also why I love 60s because it's like this complete synergy of the best things in those times. So. Yeah, in the 70s, you get the crazy patterns, jeans, bell bottoms, disco, stuff like that that started translating a lot and influencing the 80s culture that would uh, that would start appearing, which would in turn influence the 90s. But, well, that's kind of what time is. Like, you influence the... It's just time. Like, it's not like 70s, oh, it suddenly became 80s. Like, you had a definition. It's not like that. But still, it's like the 70s were completely different from the 50s. Whereas the 60s were completely different from the 80s, I think. So it's interesting to see how those two sets, like 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and yet right here at the middle, you got like these interesting, similar things. But yeah, I don't know if that made any sense. <laughs> I think I'm just like going on and on. But yeah, I feel like this was a short video because that's all I've got for you guys. So thank you guys for watching, uh, that's all I have for you today, but I enjoyed making this video. Um, if you like this video, subscribe. Uncle Sam wants you to subscribe to my channel.